Well, Graham is a huge loss. Graham is kind of the heartbeat of the team, and he's a kind of a man apart, really, because when I talk to other counties about Cork, a lot of their strategy is about stopping Graham coming forward and trying to keep him off the ball, you know. Mm. Um, he kind of sets the tempo of a game for Cork, but I suppose it's time for the rest of them to kind of stand up now and, uh, and realise at this stage that more than likely he won't be playing, you know. Yeah, just on the subject of Graham Canty as well, uh, Tony, he's obviously the, the main leader in the Cork team as captain. And there's been a, a talk, I suppose, recently about this Cork team that there is a lack of leaders in, in that team. Is that a valid point? Going into I'm Sunday? not sure about that because when you look at the Cork team, it's a team effort, really. If I ask you the question, oh, how many of this Cork team will be all-stars? OK, you look at the team and you go through them. Yeah, good game, very good game, good game, good game, all up along the pitch. Very few players have stood out in the year, but they've all played really well. Like Graham Canty, Daniel Goulding have stood out, but the rest of them are consistently playing well. So they have a good panel. In fact, Cork have used 24 players this year. 11 players have started in every game and eight in the same position. Dublin have used more players. Six players starting in every game and six players in the same position. So Dublin have actually used more players than Cork in this year's championship. Yeah, now going into Sunday, Tony, obviously Cork's form in the qualifiers and in the quarterfinal against Ross Common uh, hasn't been exceptional apart from maybe that last 20 minutes against Ross Common. But that was a tough few weeks for Cork as well, to be fair. I think it was four weekends in a row that they were out in championship action. They came through it. It's been a three-week break now uh, since that Ross Common game. Would you be expecting uh, much fresher legs and, and a better uh, Cork performance on Sunday? I suppose you have to look at every performance as it happens. And you, you're playing Ross Common tomorrow. It's very, very hard to rise your game. You know it's a knockout. You know that you have to play really well against them. But in, in, in essence, it's Ross Common you're playing. And it's, you'll, you'll have a thing in the back of your mind that you will beat them. Now, it's different when you're playing Dublin. It's Croke Park. The place will be absolutely full. to be rocking. And it's a very attractive tie, Cork and Dublin. So, listen, I think the, the whole lot of Cor- the Cork players next Sunday, they, they'll be up for this. They, they certainly will not have the mentality they had going out against Ross Common. You know? They'll be really up for it. And they'll know that they, if they go out and play well, well, they're back in the all and final again. Yeah, and I suppose one of the main criticisms, Tony, of uh, of Conor Coonan, and I suppose in particular in the recent weeks, has been the fact that he's found it difficult, really, I suppose, to get a, a settled starting 15. Is that a worry for you going into this weekend? Not really, because he has a pro- probably a panel, as I mentioned already, he used 24 players so far this year. 11 have started every match and 8 in the same position. So the players that are rotating, look, you have... Probably about 17 or 18 lads that can come on all the time. And that's modern football. In the end of, tomorrow, in the, end of the game on Sunday, there's going to be 20 lads uh, on the field playing regardless. So what's his best team? Connor is the only one that knows that. And it does change. It depends on the injuries. It depends on form. It's been a long season, six games right through. It's hard to have the same team all along, you know. But I suppose what they have to do is get up to a level where, they, where we know they can play, like they played last year against Donegal and against Tyrone. If they hit anything like that, I don't think Dublin will, will come near them, actually. Yeah, and just in terms of Dublin, Tony, um, how impressed have you been with their, we'll say, resurgence uh, since Leinster? Because after Meath put five goals in them, I don't think you'd have uh, found too many people uh, predicting Dublin to make an All-Ireland semi-final. No, not at all. They were very poor that day. Uh, their full back line was shocking. They got no protection, and yet it's the same goalkeeper and three full backs that played against uh, against me that are playing against Cork the next day. But I think what they did the last after that game is they went back to basics. They they upped their work rate. They went back to what they did during the league, actually, where they all defend en masse. Um, you have everybody behind the ball when, when Cork are attacking, and then they break at pace trying to get the ball into Bernard Brogan as quickly as possible. Uh, they work a lot on kickouts. Uh, Cluxton is really doing well at the kickouts, trying to find his own man. He's kicking 45s, and I suppose they're depending totally on the two lads up front, but certainly they have improved. They're very brave and honest, and certainly they won't be short uh, work rate the next day. But I'm just wondering, have they the experience at all to to go near Cork at all? You know, I'm not sure they have that that, the same experience that Cork have, the same amount of players. No matter what 15 they put on the field, they're not going to be as good as the Cork 15. Yeah, and it's a a kind of a unique rivalry as well, Tony, in that it's an intense enough rivalry, even though the teams have only met in the Championship, I think, a couple of times in the past 25, 30 years. Um, You obviously have fond memories, though, of playing Dublin, especially from 89. Yeah, I I have, and 
I suppose it's kind of a sexy tie, really, Paul, because you know uh, Cork and Dublin, the two cities in, in uh, two of the major cities in Ireland, and look, you have most of the media based in Dublin and in Cork, so you know they they have to write about something. They have to you know, to, to build it up. And it's one of the huge pressures that uh, Dublin and Cork have actually is in their dealing with the media. And I think this week, both um, Connor and Gilroy, they've really managed that well. Gilroy in particular has kind of managed Dublin's expectations and saying, really, you know, we're in, we're in bonus territory here. You know, whatever happens after this is going to be great. Trying to take the pressure off. You don't see too many Dublin players in the, in the media all week talking or too many spreads on them. Similarly with Connor, they're used to it now. Uh, they've been through it for the last uh, like Cork have been in the last six semi-finals mm-hmm. winning two like nobody other than Kerry has beaten Cork since 2004 for Manus so look you know I think Cork certainly will be favourites the next day they have the players it's just to get it right on the day yeah, and as we mentioned, 89, Tony, was uh, Cork's last championship win over Dublin after Dublin's win in 95. What are your memories of that day? Gee, I don't remember too much with Paul, to be honest, other than I was marking Vinnie Murphy, uh, one of their uh, their stars at the time. And uh, we had a good team that time, 89. We were very mature. We were after losing 87, 88, all Ireland finals. So, look, we were well used to losing all Ireland finals. We were well used to losing games. Mm-hmm. And there comes a time when the team matures and the team gets ruthless. And I think that's uh, the, our year, really. Meat were put out on the other side of the draw, which meant that we had played Mayo in the all Ireland final. Similarly to this year, I suppose, we're thrown and Kerry are out, you know. So, the two nemesis are gone, really, particularly Kerry. I wasn't too worried about Tyrone this year, actually, Paul, because I thought Tyrone actually were leggy and they were gone, mm-hmm. and there'll be huge changes needed there. But Kerry, if they had got over the last day, they would have been very dangerous again. But look, there are similarities between now and 89, certainly, but totally different outfits, different team, different time. Yeah, hopefully a good omen for this year. But uh, just very finally, Tony, um, just to get a prediction from you, it does sound like you're uh, certainly veering towards Cork for Sunday. Yeah, I think Cork's experience, certainly. They're, they're, they're about four or five years ahead of what this Dublin team. I think the D- Dublin team this year have got farther than any of them expected. In the minds of this Dublin team, go out next Sunday, they'll all believe they can win. It's very important for Cork to get a good start so that Dublin will be drawn out of their defensive thing that they'll have to attack. And I think that would suit Cork. So if Cork could get a good start, uh, but I think no matter what happens, I think Cork, experience and Cork's better players actually should win it on the day. A great day, great colour, great excitement and it would be great to go on to the All-Ireland Final.